Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. As I'm sure everyone is aware, our nation, along with the rest of the world, is dealing with some things that has caused a surge in gun and ammunition sales. A lot of these gun sales are to people who are new to firearms, and whatever the reason is that you've made the decision to purchase one, I want to welcome you into the gun community. This video is intended for those taking their first steps into firearms ownership, as I wanted to make some firearms basics videos to help you as you learn about your new purchase. In an effort to keep them short, I'm going to make a small series of them focusing on just a couple of things in each one. These will not be fully in-depth on any particular gun, as there's so many different kinds it would be impossible to cover them all in detail, so these will be a higher level overview. You can watch the ones that apply to you and skip the ones that you might not have an interest in. This video is on firearms basics, sort of like a 101 intro to firearms, and is applicable to all of them. The first thing, Guns are not toys. They're capable of causing extreme injury or death. You should not necessarily fear them, but always maintain a healthy respect for them. Also, along those lines, children are often fascinated by guns. I know I was, and so were my friends growing up. But times were different then. It was commonplace to see shotguns in the back of pickup trucks, or a gun rack in someone's home. We grew up with guns in the house, and we knew not to handle them. However, we also knew how to handle them, and what the differences were between toy guns and real guns. That was then. Now, gun culture is not as open. A lot of kids have never handled a toy gun, let alone a real one. And even if you educate your children, you never know about your children's friends. While I advocate that you do teach your children so that they know the difference, I also advise you to make sure that your firearms are kept locked up safely when not in use. For those of you that have purchased a gun for home defense, there are a variety of rapid deployment lockable gun vaults that will allow you to keep them locked away from inquisitive hands, but still allow you rapid access should you need it. You can also use trigger locking devices to immobilize a firearm if needed. Not only is it my opinion that you use these, it's the law in many parts of the country. There are four primary rules that you must learn and follow at all times while handling guns. You're going to slip on occasion, and so they're designed so that if you miss one, the others should help to keep you and others safe. Rule number one, all guns are always loaded. By that, I mean you should always assume a gun is loaded and ready to be fired. Even if you just unloaded it yourself, treat it as if it were loaded. I mean, really, have you never thought you did something to discover you didn't? Or have you ever looked for your keys and then found them in your pocket? This is where the phrase, he was shot with an empty gun, came from. Rule number two, never point the gun at something that you're not willing to destroy or kill. Whether empty, loaded, or even partially disassembled, always follow this rule. I've heard it said by many, even myself, that guns don't shoot themselves. That's meant in the sense that they're inanimate objects. However, a gun is a mechanical object, and mechanical things can fail. While rare, a trigger or safety can fail, and a loaded gun can go off on its own. My first car was a 1968 Mercury Montego that I purchased in 1982. It was in pretty good shape, but one morning I was going to school and it wouldn't start. I took the keys out of the ignition, walked to the front of the car, and opened the hood. As I was lifting the hood, the car started and even revved up a little bit. Even with no one in the driver's seat, or even keys in the ignition, it started itself and ran. How did that happen? Well, the ignition key assembly shorted itself out, energized the starter solenoid, and started the car. After about 15 minutes, it shorted again and engaged the starter while still running, stalling the motor, and destroying the starter. I was able to disconnect the battery at that time to keep it from potentially catching fire, but the point is, mechanical things can, and do, fail. Never rely on them to keep you safe. Rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger until such time as it's aimed at your designated target and you are ready to shoot. Triggers come in a variety of types, with some requiring very long, heavy pulls. You have to really work to pull those triggers. I've encountered some, however, that are proverbial hair triggers that only require you to barely touch them to fire the gun. Most are somewhere in between. Maintain what is called trigger discipline, which is keeping your finger off the trigger, generally pointed at your target alongside the gun, until you're ready to shoot. Stressful situations can make you jittery, and adrenaline can make that heavy trigger feel like nothing but air. Rule number four, know what your target is and what's beyond it. You may miss your target. What will you hit if that happens? You might go through your target. What lies beyond it? Remember, bullets can and do penetrate through walls and barriers, and even people. 
so you need to be aware of what is beyond your target that you might not even be able to see. Remember, once you fire a gun, you are responsible for anything the fired bullet hits, intentional or not. Firearms are very powerful items. As the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. You are responsible and will be held responsible legally for what happens with your gun. You owe it to yourself, your family, and community to ensure that you are safe. I hope that this information is of value, and if you liked the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. I appreciate your viewership, value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.